Oh, yeah. 
Thank you, my Lord. Why not lift up your hand and adore him? Why not just lift up those hands and give him thanks for all that he has done, for the good things that he has done, for his mercies upon your life. Without God's mercy, we don't know where we have been today. With your grace, you cannot do it. But with his grace, we are in his presence today to give him thanks for all the good things, for all the mighty things, for all the good things. Hey, oh. Ki ji ja 
by your word this morning, carry us, carry us, carry us to the very top, to the mountain top, to where our blessings are. Father, as we lift up our hands, we are in expectation of an encounter with you. Let your word do that which only you can do. Release your word today and let your word speak forth the glory of God in our lives that at the end of today we will never remain the same. Let it be so, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. This season you shall experience newness of life because of the new wave of glory that God had already released even upon us, his children, in the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of God, I'm going to be speaking today on a topic, a new beginning, a new beginning. And I'm going to take my text. It's a pretty long one, so please follow me as I read. Let's open our Bibles to Jonah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1 to 17. Jonah chapter 1 from verse 1 to 17. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose and flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found the ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man crowded to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. Verse 6. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. For they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to them, they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land. But they could not. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. For we do not charge us, for do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Then the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our head as we pray. Spirit of the living God, Thank you for your presence that has been here even before we came. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. Move in our midst. Touch our lives. Do that which only you can do. Let the heavens be open. And by the reason of your word that's about to come forth, let our lives receive your blessing. Let it be well with us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 
a new beginning. Beloved, a beginning can be described as the commencement of a journey. A beginning. It can be described as the commencement of a journey. The starting point of something. When we say beginning, we are talking about the starting point of something. It can be a journey, it can be a project, it can be a decision, it can be a relationship, but the beginning is the starting point. And not every journey has a destination. I want you to take note of that. Not every journey, you'll be wondering, ah, what is pastor saying? Not every journey has a destination. Under normal circumstances, one, we want to believe that when you commence a journey, you should arrive at a final destination. That's under normal circumstances. But the question is, is all circumstances normal? Praise the mighty name of Jesus. When you want to board a plane, for example, you are traveling out of the country, they will ask you, what is your final destination? That's the question they will always ask you. Because your luggage needs to arrive at the final destination where you are going. Because you might be going to a plane that is heading to New York. But when you get to New York, you yourself, you are continuing on a journey to Bahamas. So you are not going to get a plane straight from Nigeria to Bahamas. Maybe you have to fly to New York or to Atlanta or to wherever. Amen? And your final destination is Bahamas. So a people entering the same aircraft, they have various destinations. So they have to ask you, where is your final destination? So that your luggage will arrive at the place where you are going. Beloved, it's not everyone on a journey that has a destination. Amen? It's not everyone. Amen? When Jonah entered that boat or that ship that was heading to Tarshish, he didn't, that wasn't his destination. He was on a journey fleeing away from the presence of God. Although it wasn't recorded, but I know in my own head that should he have gotten to Tarshish, wouldn't, that, wouldn't God be there waiting for him? He would have fled again to another destination. And he would keep running and running and running. So not every journey has a destination. Some people may have had a destination in mind at the beginning, but along the journey, they had lost sight of it. Praise the name of the Lord. Only those who focus and keep their mind on the goal will arrive at the destination. Those who don't focus and keep their eyes stayed on the ball will be derailed by the things which attract them. The things that distract are always the things that you lost after. The things, the loss of the eyes that will temporarily satisfy the flesh. They distract us. Beloved, the world we live in is filled with so many things that will distract you from your goals. So many things. Entertainment, fashion, money, sex, power, fame, parties. All these things are means of distraction from your journey. The question that you should ask yourself this morning, what is your destination? Have you ever asked yourself, what is my destination? Amen? Because if you don't have a destination, you are, you are on a journey to nowhere. You are like Jonah. Just fleeing, moving, leaving. But there is no destination. What destination have you set for yourself to arrive at? What destination? Because if you don't have a destination, then you are on a journey to nowhere. Praise the name of the Lord. This also speaks to preparation. Amen? Many of us today once had a clear destination at heart and started off on our journey very well, but have derailed from the path with distractions of the world 
and may have even abandoned our journey. This is what happened to Jonah. The prophet, we read that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. So before the word of the Lord could have come to Jonah, it means that Jonah was doing very well at the beginning. Amen? Because the word says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. He gave an instruction. Clear! He heard it. But Jonah lost track of his destination. And he entered a journey to nowhere. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. I want you to know one thing this morning. Nobody can run away from the presence of God. There is no way. Where can you hide? You cannot hide. As you ask yourself today, are you still on the journey which God has sent you? Ask yourself that question. Are you still on the journey which God has sent you? Some of us don't even have any destination at all. And therefore, anything goes. Anything. Anything. It goes. You keep following others who themselves have no destination at heart. And they are misleading you to a very great crash. It's not a matter of if. It is when will your crash happen. Amen? Because you have no destination. You have no plan. You have no purpose. You have no direction. You have nothing that you are praying to or looking for or planning to do or arriving at. You have no destination. You just leave. You wake up in the morning. Anything happens, you take it like that. You sleep at night and you wake up again and you're just encumbering the world. You are just counting among the numbers of the seven billion people that are in the world. No destination. No destination. But a new beginning is an opportunity for everyone to start afresh. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to correct the mistakes of the past. It's an opportunity to re-strategize. It's an opportunity to be recommitted. And above all, it's an opportunity to be reconnected with God. So anytime you hear a new beginning, if you are wise, you jump at it. Because not everybody has an opportunity of a new beginning. I'll give you just one example. Saul in the Bible, he was on a journey and God gave him an assignment to rule and to reign over and lead the children of Israel. And he kept on living what God had said and doing what pleases him. And at the end of the day, God got tired of him and removed him. And he had, let me even say he had the opportunity, but he didn't, he didn't take it because he should have repented and come back and experience a new beginning. But he did not. He did not. A new beginning is a great opportunity that you must grab with all your hearts and with all your soul because it is not everyone that has the privilege of a new beginning. Now, we are in the season of a new wave of glory. In the redeemed Christian church of God, August is a beginning of a new calendar year. We are in the month of a new beginning. Everything is targeted at starting afresh. Beloved, are you going to grab the opportunity or you will sit back and continue on your journey to no destination? A new beginning. Saul had the opportunity of a new beginning. If he had repented, who knows? Maybe God would have changed his mind. But he didn't take the advantage of it. Jonah, on the other hand, was on a journey to nowhere, fleeing God's presence. And he had the opportunity to repent. Because he himself told them in the ship that why this sea is raging is because he had disobeyed the God that made all things, the God of the heaven and of the sea. And he told them, throw me out so that I will not cause everyone to perish. Let me take the load on my head. And God prepared a fish. And he landed in the belly of a fish. 
three days and three nights. In that three days and three nights, he had a reset. He had another opportunity. And he grabbed it. Because when you go to Jonah chapter 2 or Jonah chapter 3, when you read verse 1 to 3, you will see what the Bible says. It says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. A new beginning. Another opportunity. Another chance. And it says, the same word, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to the message that I tell you. What did Jonah do? So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. He took the opportunity of a second chance. According to the word of the Lord, and he went to that great city and preached the gospel. Now, what does a new beginning offer to you as I begin to round up this morning? Number one, the opportunity to have a fresh start. That's what a new beginning does for you. It gives you an opportunity for a fresh start. Let's not be fooled. Many of us, we need a fresh start. I know that I need a fresh start because, you know, when you start to live your life, you begin to find out, oh, I should have done this this way. I should have done that this way. Oh, I wish I had another opportunity. And God is telling us that he's giving you another opportunity. A new beginning. So, a new beginning offers you, number one, an opportunity to have a fresh start. We need newness of life that shows forth the glory of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 Romans 6 and verse 4. It says, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When you see your life is not showing forth the glory of God, you need a new beginning, a fresh start. What does a new beginning offer to you? Number two, reconciliation with God. A new beginning offers reconciliation with God. For as many as have lost direction in and a close relationship with God because of the cares of the world, a new beginning gives you the opportunity to make amends and take your calling or assignment seriously. Stop following the crowd. Stop following the crowd and get serious with God so that your story can turn to glory. A lot of us are following the crowd. We just move among the crowd. The crowd can never save you. Even if we are one billion gathered here, God will deal with us individually. He deals with you individually. All of us have individual journey that we are to make. So never think that moving with the crowd will save you. After Jonah's disobedience, he came back in reconciliation with God. Otherwise, maybe we wouldn't have written about Jonah again. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, a new beginning offers to you restoration. 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 Restoration in Christ is the return or regain of lost glory. A lot of us have lost many things to the enemy. We've lost things. Either by the things that we've done or by the things that we have failed to do. Things that are good, that are blessed, that are glorious, that are peaceful, that are joyous, have been lost on account of mistakes, stubbornness, ignorance, disobedience, laziness, and even greed. But a new beginning gives you an opportunity for restoration. Beloved, are you going to grab it? Amos chapter 9 and verse 14. Amos 9 verse 14. It says, I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruits from them. A lot of us, we need restoration. We have lost too much and a new beginning offers us an opportunity 
for restoration. Two more very quickly. A new beginning offers for us the opportunity for forgiveness. Forgiveness. Beloved, unforgiveness is a limitation to your blessing. And this is in two ways. When you offend God, you need to plead for forgiveness and repentance. But very importantly, I want you to write it down. You must also learn to forgive those who offend you. A lot of us are holding people grudge. Holding your father, your mother, that uncle, that neighbor, that boss that didn't allow you to be promoted. You are holding him grudge. And God is saying, if you don't forgive them, I will not forgive you. And it's limiting you from the glory that God has set before you. Mark 11, 25. Mark 11, 25. It says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your sins. Finally, number five. A new beginning offers to us an opportunity for a new wave of glory. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. A new wave of glory is a beginning that is far better than what you have been experiencing until now. In this season of a new wave of glory, expect a new beginning of all round greater glory. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, my time is already up. Before we pray, about three prayers very quickly, let's bow our heads. And let us give an opportunity for those that need to have a new beginning. Amen? One of the things that you need in a new beginning is a fresh start. A reconnection with Jesus. And a reconnection means accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because in John 15 and verse 5, it says that Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches. And without him, you can do nothing. This is an opportunity to start afresh with him. You need to surrender your life. So if you are here under the sound of my voice, you are watching online, you want to give your life to Jesus, all you need to do is to raise up your hand unto him that sees all things so that he can pull you out of sin, out of the merry clay and take you to your high places and your life will begin to have a new meaning. A season of a new wave of glory has been released. But for, for you to qualify, you need the reconnection to Jesus Christ. So anyone, very quickly, we don't have time. If you are lifting up your hands, you lift it up very quickly because I'm about to pray now. You are giving your life to Jesus afresh or you are reconnecting. Maybe you have been born again before and you went into sin and you want to rededicate your life. It's also a fresh start. And as many as are doing so, I want you to pray and say, Father, please forgive me for my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me and give me a reconnection to the true vine so that I will be a branch that will show and manifest your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Quickly, let's be on our feet as we pray. The first thing we're going to pray this morning is a, is a prayer of mercy that God should cleanse us from every errors and failures of the past and give us a new beginning of great success. So we pray and say, Father, I ask for your mercy. Cleanse me from all errors and failures of the past and give me a new beginning of great success. Give me a new beginning of great success. Father, I ask for your mercy. Cleanse me from all errors and failures of the past and give me a new beginning of great success in the name of Jesus. We pray and say, Father, as I reconnect and I recommit myself to you, please reposition me for continuous upward movement in all areas of my life. Say, Father, as I reconnect, and recommit myself to you, please reposition me for a continuous upward movement in all areas of my life. 
And finally, you pray and say, Father, in this season and beyond, let me experience a new wave of glory in the name of Jesus. In this season and beyond, let me experience a new wave of glory in all areas of my life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Answer all our prayers and let our joy be full. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. An individual as a family, even as a church, celebrate God this hour. Let's go ahead and stretch our hand to the Son of the Most High this morning. Let's begin to declare to God that God will continually be with him, O oh Lord. Visit him on in that, in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to declare that this that he has done today will never start against him. He will be the first partaker in the name of Jesus. Newness of glory, newness of grace upon his life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. So our Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for the life of your son. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, there will be fresh wisdom from above, O oh Lord. You will refill and refresh him in the name of Jesus. Forever, when he leave his eyes unto the ill, you will answer for him in the name of Jesus. Above all, you will preserve him and all of his from evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the people of God will shout a believing amen. amen. Going further in this glorious service this morning, I want to pay my tithe. I've transferred online. Please, can you be on your feet? I want to pay my tithe. I've transferred my tithe online. Or you want to transfer your tithe right now. You can do that to account number 101-586-5372. 101-586-5372. The account name is RCCG Priest Tabernacle and the bank is Zenith Bank. For those of us that have transferred online or you are paying this morning, let's go ahead and begin to lay petition to that tithe. Remember, God said, bring all tithe to my storehouse. And it gave us a decree alongside that the moment you bring it, I'm going to silence every devourer. Go ahead and begin to ask him that these are what you want to experience in the source of that tithe is with you so for that now god will thank you we appreciate you for your grace upon your sons and your daughter to bring their tithe before your storehouse lord we ask oh lord that you will silence every form of devour consigning them in the name of jesus lord we ask oh lord by the reason of this oh lord there will be fresh start in everything they do in the name of Jesus. The wave of glory will be continual in the name of Jesus. Above all, never again, they will never suffer casting down in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's be seated in his presence. Because of protocol, we will not be using envelope and we're going to have our offering this morning, your worship offering. So choir, please lead us. Remember, the heart that God bless is the heart that give cheerfully. So you're going to give your offering this morning cheerfully and the Lord God will command his blessing upon those offerings in the name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet this morning as a choir lead us. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. As we offer, as we offer unto thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving. Let your praise support your substance this morning. The sacrifices of praise. Sacrifice. 
are not celebrating like somebody that is expecting new wave of glory. As we offer up to thee the sacrifice is of thanksgiving. As we offer up to thee the sacrifice is of praise. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon my soul, I will dance a living dance. I want to believe this is not the way they be down. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon my soul. I will dance and they be dance. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance and they be dance. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance and they be dance. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will dance and they be dance. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my I will dance a baby dance. I will dance. I will dance. I will dance a baby dance. I will dance. I will dance. I will dance a baby dance. For the Lord is good. 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 And His mercy is enduring forever. If the Lord has been so good to you, point to this offering and begin to thank him for not allowing you to come before him empty. And ask him, oh Lord, because I have bring this to you today, Lord, for the rest of my life, I will be on top of my finances. Go ahead and begin to declare what you want to experience in your finances. Never again. I would never be a slave to money. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I have come to you with my substance this morning. I will never come before you empty. In the name of Jesus. Lord, continually there will be abundance in my home, in all that I do. Go ahead and begin to declare. He said, declare it in and it shall be established. Remember, this is a new beginning. And in new beginning, there is restoration. But the reason of this finance is, O oh Lord, restore to me, O oh Lord, all that I have lost in area of my finances. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Faithful one of Israel, we appreciate you. We raise your name on high because you are the one that give us seed to bring before you this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, that your hand of blessing will never be cut short in our life in the name of Jesus. You will visit us continually in our finances, O oh Lord. In every area of our life, you give us a fresh start. Above all, in our finances as an individual, as a church, we have a continuous wave of glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we be seated in his presence? Let's go ahead and celebrate God for the newness of grace. Freshness of breath. The newness of his power is going to visit us like never before. Thank you, mighty God. Today is my first time of worshiping in praise Tabernacle. Today is your first time, please. We want to be identified with you this morning. Can you please be on your feet? Today is your first time of coming to praise Tabernacle on a Sunday like this. Can we be identified with you this morning? Today is my first time of, oh, God bless you, my sister. You are welcome. The right place at the right time. Oh, God bless you. The right people. You will never go back the same way you came. You are in the right place at the right time with the right people. You will never go back the same way you came. Don't you know you mean so much to us? Don't you know you mean so much to us? God 
God bless you. My sisters, please remain standing. This is Praise Tabernacle and we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you have come today, God himself will give you that your long-awaited blessing in the name of Jesus. And you will experience a new wave of glory. This is Praise Tabernacle where God promised that we will be the first partaker of new wave of glory. And your own will not be an exemption in the name of Jesus. Today that you have come, you are a guest to us. But after today, you are a part of this family. And the card that you have been given, please, we want you to fill it correctly. Your full name, your mobile number, the nearest bus stop to your house. And we will get in touch with you in the course of the week. But today that you have come, the priest Tabernacle want to declare the word that is going to be expressly delivered is answered into your life. Priest Tabernacle, let's begin to declare to their life. That this one, because they have come today, God will visit them on in that. There will be an angelic assistance for them, even this week in the name of Jesus. God will give them first hand blessing. For they have come today in a day of a new beginning. They will experience new season in their life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And uh, today that you have come, I want to specially introduce to you the pastor in charge of Praise Tabernacle, Pastor Evans or Nojego. I believe God, he would love to be your pastor and you will be a good sheep in the name of Jesus. Please, let's listen to the following announcement as we're about to round up this service. Our weekly activities begins with morning deal prayers on a Sunday like this. On our Facebook page, RCCG Press Tabernacle, within the hours of 6.30 a.m. and 6.45. God declare a word and it is established. If you have not been joining, please, you can do that even after this service. The Lord God will answer all our prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have two services running in Press Tabernacle except for our special Sundays. We have the first service start early riser. It runs between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. every Sunday like this. And the second service is tag service, praise service, between the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 12 p.m., where God answer us like never before. We have our Digging Deep service on our Facebook page, RCCG Praise Tabernacle. It's online service between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. It's just 30 minutes where we meet and God expose the word of God to us afresh. We have our faith clinic service. That is our physical church gathering. It happens every Thursday between the hours of 7, 6.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. It's just an hour program where we come and lay our petition before God and God give us instant answers. Come, let's pray together. And God will answer all our prayers in the name of Jesus. For you to know more about Praise Tabernacle, please visit our website, rccgpraisetabernacle.com, and our Facebook page, rccgpraisetabernacle Ogombo. Then our YouTube channel is rccgpraisetabernacle Ogombo. For those of us that have not filled our bow data that's been passed around by the ushers, please pick it from ushers as we're going out, fill it, and returning to them. It's just for us to get to know you more. And the Lord God will visit you in the name of Jesus. I want to pay my tithe, my offering. You can do that to our bank account RCCG, Praise Tabernacle. The account number is 101-586-5372. 101-586-5372. The bank is Zenith Bank. Also, there are several ongoing projects in the church. Please, you can be part of that project by giving your seed to it. And the account number to that account is 101-661-5945. 101-661-5945. And the account name is RCCG Press Tabernacle Project. Please, in case you don't have all these account number, you can meet with ushers. They'll be glad to give that to you. Believers class, water baptism class, and workers in training class 
happens immediately after our second service. Please, for those of us that attend the first service, please let's endeavor to come back for these classes immediately after second service. It's just a 30 minutes class, and the Lord God will bless you richly for doing that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for those of us that have undergo the class, we can meet with the church at me. She will tell us what to do. Also, if you are a member of Praise Tabernacle, the only way we can know you better is to belong to a house care fellowship. In case you don't know the one that is closer to you, please meet with ushers. They will direct you accordingly. Also, members of prayers department will be having a prayer meeting on Saturday 14th of August. And new members are also welcome. God bless you. That may be all for this service. If God has blessed you like never before, why don't you be on your feet and begin to appreciate him like never before? He's a faithful God. He has never failed. He's the one that woke you up this morning. It's not because you set that alarm. It's, be it's not because it's part of your system to wake up. But God just deemed it fit and necessary that, yes, for this my son, for this my daughter, come to the land of the living. Let's go ahead and begin to appreciate him, even for the word that have come like never before. That word that give you an opportunity of a new beginning. Let's thank him. Let's appreciate him. Let's adore him. That God that promised you and I a new wave of glory. Let's give honor, glory, adoration to his name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Let's have our declaration. John 15, 16. I did not choose you, but you chose me. That I appointed me that I should go. And that my fruit should remain. And whatever I ask the Father, he may give unto me. Let's have our Redeemer's anthem. Just the first answer. says whatever we ask the father Psalm 19 verse 1 says the heaven declare the glory of God and the firmament show his handiwork and that in the Lord has told us several things about wave of glory but it dawned on me that you can be in the midst of wave of glory and you may not experience it just like our daddy in the Lord also told us in the sermon today for several reasons. And that's why we're going to pray in line with this scripture and we're going to declare, Lord, let the heaven declare your glory upon my life. And forever, let your firmament begin to show your handwork upon my life. Let's go ahead and begin to declare this morning. Lord, let the heavens declare glory upon my life. Let there be an evidence of that glory. Let me not be in the crowd and not experience you. Lord, I ask, oh Lord, let your heaven declare the glory upon my life. Let there be evidence, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, we have declared unto your hearing today. And we ask, oh Lord, that it will please you to answer us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, The Son of God is lifted high.